How many times do you look at a password prompt and think there's got to be a better way to do this? I mean, we have entire websites dedicated to showing off your exposed password. And not only that, but 80% of hacking is related to breaches that occur. Don't know if I can trust this website, but you get the point. Well, the reason and inspiration for today's video is a small highlight of what Apple, Google, and Microsoft has recently announced on World Password Day. They're embracing of the FIDO2 passkey technology. Now, before looking a little bit more into the passwordless future, let's take a look at the brief history of the password and actually pause. I hate when YouTubers do this and they just don't give you the answer for 10 minutes. So the answer is I see the world of passwords being a mesh between passwordless and passwords or knowledge-based authentication. Previous attempts to solve the password problem or I guess passwordless. The idea of the password started at MIT in 1960 with Fernando Carbato. At this time, the CTSS or Compatible Time Sharing System had recently been developed. The CTSS was a general purpose operating system which introduced multi-threading and allowed separate consoles to access a shared mainframe. Users had their own set of files and in order to secure these private files, Fernando Carbato introduced the password. As computers became more accessible to the wider mass public via the introduction of the personal computer, uh, well, passwords were being continually exposed as, you know, being a weak form of authentication. So researchers got together and they tried to solve this problem via the passwordless, I guess, problem. Previous attempts to solve the password problem include the one-time password, which was held by physical key fobs. The OTP automatically generates an alphanumeric string of characters, and it can only be used once. And then in the 1990s, researchers brought the idea of single sign-on or SSO authentication. SSO eliminates the use of one password per application and authenticates a user across an entire network of applications. By the mid-2000s, a blended password passwordless model methodology were developed, such as the multi-factor authentication, which you have to supply two or more factors of authentication. Well, online authentication is really, it's a challenge. Of course, we know that by now. Humans are predictable, and they're also pretty lazy. So what are these big tech companies endorsing this time around as a different method of passwordless? Well, enter the FIDO2 and the web Authn specification. FIDO, or Fast Identity Online, is an industry association whose mission is to reduce the world's reliance on passwords. Now, together with the W3 WebAuthn specification, these groups aim to improve the usability and deployability of the FIDO-based authentication standard. FIDO emphasizes a device-centric model, so instead of using a random string or sequence of characters, the FIDO standard uses public key cryptography. Public key cryptography uses two mathematically linked pairs of keys, one private and one public. These keys can be used to encrypt and decrypt a message using the public and private key. Now explained in simple terms, if Alice and Bob want to transmit a message to one another, let's say Alice wants to send a message to Bob, Bob gives Alice his public key, Alice takes the message of Debu Da, encrypts the message with Bob's public key, and then Alice sends that text over. And then Bob uses his private key to decrypt the message, and he knows that it is from Alice. The FIDO2 standard uses a very similar model to this. So a user wants to create an account on a website. The user will create a private public key pair on their device, such as a mobile phone. The user will send that public key to the server and then keep its private key on the device. To authenticate the user, the device signs a challenge from the server using the private key stored on that device. And then these keys are stored in an encrypted vault and can be only unlocked by, say, a fingerprint, a pin, or some sort of user interaction. So together with the W3C's WebAuthn, a web-based API, which is used to enable FIDO authentication to be built directly into browsers and platforms, the FIDO2 standard aims to eliminate transmission of knowledge-based authentications, or passwords. So from my personal perspective and opinion, I see password lists and passwords being a mesh for online authentication. I do think the FIDO2 standard and the web Authn specification are absolutely a step in the right direction and a lot better than what we have today. There's still going to be a core set of issues with storing, maintaining, and recovering 
private keys, even if they're on a phone or in the cloud. I mean, it it's still a, a significant issue. What are your thoughts on the passwordless future? Do you think they are here to stay? Or do you think passwordless FIDO2 standard or some sort of other method is going to take the new headline of something? I hope you've enjoyed today's video, learned something maybe a bit new. And until the next day or next time, have a good day.